Okay, everybody, welcome back. We, uh, we left off on Article 8 at Item 9, which is the Pine Hill Emergency Access Road for $80,000. And, and that's me. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Um, I've sat at your table many years in the past, and it seemed like every year there was something to do with Pine Hill Emergency Access and parking and I don't know what else. Um, and I would always ask, what's the problem we're trying to solve? And I think at one point I even suggested uh, to one person who was presenting the Pine Hill Emergency Access uh, solution to whatever the problems were. I said, well, that problem, well, part of that problem could be solved by ticketing and towing. And uh, I don't think they appreciated that, which was the parking problem there. I'm not here to solve that parking problem. What I've done, as you may recall, the town did approve uh, some engineering in the past. And then that engineering and design uh, was accepted by the town. And then the towns tried to raise some funds, but uh, those funds um, weren't approved by the town, although I guess uh, there was a majority, but not enough for the two thirds. Um, there is this uh, million dollars that the state has presumably earmarked out there that may or may not ever come. Um, and what I'm uh, uh, trying to achieve, um, let me put it to you this way. You guys have those nice name tags there. When I got one of these, one of the things that really jumped out to me is the importance of public safety. And you hear that word uh, a lot, but in this situation, it's very important. And so um, the very first day I was a selectman, May 9th, I sent to Jim Purcell an email. And I said, one of the things I think worth exploring is if we can get some emergency access capability at Pine Hill sufficient for fire trucks and other emergency vehicles to get up there for short money. That's what this is all about. And I gave you a handout which basically describes um, my notice of intent. Um, the board of selectmen, that my fellow board of selectmen were very supportive of this effort and I really appreciate it. We have approved it. Um, I've also provided you an estimate of the work to be done. And uh, one day I went there with uh, uh, Ed Wagner, CMD director, as well as Frank Hess, who's been pushing for the Pine Hill emergency access and other solutions for a number of years. And uh, as a result, we got uh, what we were looking for is using the existing and approved design to be able to put what I call, I call it the green lane version of a road that will enable uh, the big rigs to get up there if needed, or other rigs, including a snow plow to go plow stuff out of the way that's in the way should uh, of the other uh, access, the only access we have right now. Um, and I have the, uh, I'm fortunate to have the support of the uh, police chief who's sitting right behind me, uh, the fire chief, CMD director, Frank Hess, and uh, school administration, um, Valerie, um, she's not mad at me for the surprise earlier this morning because she knows I'm pushing for this. And this, in my mind, uh, or she's less mad, I'll put it to you that way. Uh, this, is my, this to me is the most important capital item on that list. Uh, that's just me speaking personally. So I don't think the state's gonna pony up in the near future. I don't know if they ever will. I know they have all sorts of unfunded liabilities and all sorts of other stuff to deal with. This is $80,000 to get emergency access. It will be chained off, there'll be some tree cutting, there'll be some uh, use of the road, the work they will do will be usable should, in fact, the state pony up the money. It will provide a base that can be used for the future. It's not, there's no intent to have, the work that's to be done here can be used for future so we won't be doing it again. And so I uh, ask for your support and I'm here to answer any and all questions you might have. Thank you. This would just be for the emergency vehicles. That's correct. General traffic. That's correct. I, I, um, you know, we, we got this from from Frank the last time we talked about this, and it says the gravel road only on this version is two hundred forty thousand dollars, and this one's eighty thousand. Yes, this is not as wide. I don't know how that was obtained, but uh, we've got uh, Ed provided us with a contractor who he's used in the past, who's uh, very helpful and very affordable. And we walked it with that contractor, so he knows exactly what we're doing. So, so this would take the same path as the proposed yes. one that if we get the money, we would Using uh, the design, that's right. Fully develop. Yep. So that, so that this, this money would be, um, would go towards site prep anyway. Correct. Yep. Yeah, I, I Mark, I, I just had a comment on it. Um, 
I'm 100% in support of this. It, this was something I worked on as well as a selectman, and, and uh, you know the, the emergency access issue at Pine Hill has been advocated that is not debatable. The police chief and fire chief have been advocating that for years. A full-blown roadway there is a more controversial issue. Uh, it raises other issues um, from a town planning perspective. This is a no-brainer. There's a compelling case made that you can't have a single point of access and egress to an elementary school. This gives you your, your access, two, two access and egress points to that school for emergencies. It, it solves the public uh, uh, safety issue. And as you point out, Mark, it, it is not a wasted project if down the line the town decides that they do want a full-blown roadway going through that area. Um, even contemplating if you rebuilt the school and you need um, more infrastructure to support that uh, newly built school. So it's, it wouldn't end up being wasted money uh, being able to make this into a usable uh, surface that vehicles can um, travel over. Um, I've been up there myself with Ed Wagner and uh, Don Crusher, I see here, you know, gave his engineering expertise when we were debating the, the full-blown Pine Hill access road when when I was on the board. It's already an area that um, has been disturbed. It was set aside with all the work that was done with Paul and company about getting the special legislation, being able to use that land, town forest land, right. for that purpose. Right. So I, I compliment the Board of Selectmen for this project, and I, I would urge us to approve it. Yes, I'll leave you one line in my handout there that uh, might help uh, further my cause. Should this single access route be impeded or not sufficient for emergency traffic needs, those within the facility may be subject to significant, but here's the key line, but preventable risk of danger. This is the prevention. Can I add just one comment? To Peters? Yeah. yeah. At, at the state level, we're trying to get the governor to release funds from the 2009 bond issue. That is, in, in 2009, there was a whole series of earmarks for different projects, and letters have been sent asking him to start releasing some of the funds from 2009. The Sherburn earmark was last year, in 2011, I believe, and therefore, because we're working on 2009, we can project that it'll be a couple of years before that funding will become available to, to uh, the fund the Sherburn earmark. It's a, a borrowing authorization, but the, the governor has to actually borrow the money before it can be spent. So therefore, there is a need to make a decision as to whether we do <coughs> nothing for a couple of years or whether we do something that would provide immediate safety. And the sense of the board was to support Peter's idea here, we need to protect our children. The children are, are, are the future, all of those things. Therefore, we support taking this provisional first step. So if the, if the governor does release the, the million dollars for the road, um, is, there, does, is the town required to match or somehow supplement that money? No, it's a million dollars, and I'm worried that by the time it does get released, the price of the road may not fit within the million dollars. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. If it fits within the million dollars, then we have the million dollars. If it exceeds, if the cost exceeds, I think the board wants to take a second look at the design to see if there's some way that we can bring it back down. But if the sense is, no, we're going to go with the original design, and the original design exceeds a million dollars, then we're left with the option of either A, local funding, or B, trying to go back to the legislature and see if they will increase the funding. And I've had some preliminary indications that perhaps there would be an interest to increase the funding at the state level, again, because I've packaged this as a public safety issue, not just another road in the Commonwealth, that this is because it's an elementary school here, because this is our, is our emergency shelter, and so on. This is fundamentally a public safety issue. 
Sean? Sean Killeen, this time I will be <laughs> lieutenant on the fire department. I, I tried to drive the access road from the cemetery to the back of the school the other day. I couldn't make it in my four-wheel drive pickup. So that doesn't exist. It was. <laughs> there was talk previously. There is a road to the back of the school oh, from the cemetery. What you're saying is that's not, a, not that's, that's not a solution because it could be understood that a gravel road would not be possible, but that's not what you're saying. No, I'm saying the one that people think is goes to the cemetery is not, it doesn't exist. Okay, thank it's you. Elliot? Elliot Taylor. Uh, last year I voted no on this access road because it did not have a sidewalk. And I think it's just insane to build a road to a school that does not have a sidewalk. Now, this is the first I've heard about this new plan. This is a gravel road out to Elliott Street. Is that correct? Yep, it's on the same plan. The yeah, same plan as yep. last year's, only just a it's, gravel it's road out to Elliott Street. It's the same location. It's basically just, a, I call it the Green Lane version of a road. Yep, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's not open. It's going to be limited access for emergency oh. only. So, sounds good to me. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're in. That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Elliot. I don't know if you voted That's down, but I like it. <laughs> uh, Robert Johnson, Western Avenue. Um, I think that we should all be clear in our minds that this is not really a solution. It's a partial um, effort. Uh, it's going to be chained off. It's a temporary uh, an emergency access. Under normal conditions, it'll be chained off. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And uh, under normal conditions, would it be plowed? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, plowing a gravel road uh, is not a CM&D's ideal. Um, I, I think that um, it's certainly better than what we have, which is nothing. Uh, however, it really isn't up to sort of any standard. Um, an unpaved road uh, in the wintertime, plowed, it's really going to be uh, questionable. Now, um, at a little bit later um, in the season and in the fall, uh, it'll probably work very well, but it really isn't an all-weather solution. So it's good. It's a lot better than what we have, which is nothing, but it really, we should all recognize that this is not the solution. Can I ask a quick question? Peter, do we know uh, whether there's any rock or ledge uh, along that cart path that's going to hike up the cost of the project? Uh, we don't know that. There is that subject, too. But uh, I don't know that. Um, the walkthrough with the, um, the, the contractor didn't suggest that. The, he didn't seem to think there were going to be any issues. But he has to put that in there, of course. Um, and speaking to Robert's point, I'm not, you know, I guess Ed's gone. But... Um, yeah, this is just for if the you know what hits the fan. That's all. this is not luxury. This is just you hate to you hope you never have to use it. But right now we have nothing. Can I just a quick question? Do you have any guess? Um, if you if you paved it with asphalt or whatever you pave it with, is that take is that take the price up one fold, two fold? Does anyone? I, I have no idea. Is that where the cost is? Just. That's where the cost is. Well, then, then you get into drainage and the other things that go okay. with that. So that's to so maintain that the asphalt under plowing and the other stresses that, that, that occur. It, it does ramp the project up another order of magnitude uh, past, past those. So what you're saying is the time period between <coughs> this and when we get monies to finish it could possibly be four or five years? Uh, 
Yeah, if, and I would still yeah, say right if, there. not when, yes. if. I'd I, like I, emergency I just wanna, access. Just in, I, I just want to point out to the committee, you know, perfection is the enemy of the good. Mm -hmm. and, and if you start getting well, into um, sure. tweaking this project, and going back into the debate, which has gone on for longer than I've been in the, the last few times. Yeah, about the, <clears throat> the you know, the, the uh, merits um, of a full-blown roadway, asphalt, yeah. sidewalks, any of that. Uh, what Peter's proposing is something that deals with the compelling emergency access issue. Again, you can't have a single point of egress and, and access to a uh, elementary school. And they're proposing something that's done from, from a town, you know, cost-saving perspective, they're using as much as our town departments as they can use for this. And this is something that Ed Wagner had proposed when he first came in as CM&D director, walking that area and giving a, you know, the best proposal that he could give to use your existing disturbed area going through there. So, you know, again, I would just revisit the issue that what we're dealing with here is the compelling uh, uh, safety aspect of this that's been uh, presented to this town, you know, and is not a debatable issue within reason uh, for years by the police chief and fire chief. I agree with Advisor Bucci. The summa bonum is served well by this. The, the greater good is is served by this project. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate it. Oh, Peter. 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 Sorry, Peter. Oh. Peter Luffett on Dopping Brook Road. Uh, two points. As a prior fierce advocate, uh, I really would hope that the, there's no question on the board's mind that this is a good plan and something that should be implemented. As additional information, uh, the town's emergency preparedness plan needs a point of assembly. And we've always been concerned and we've been criticized that Pine Hill School is an excellent point of assembly, but for the lack of this second access. Um, the plan reduces us to using fire station and so forth when the Pine Hill School is a far better site. This, I believe, would qualify that site as a point of assembly for emergency preparedness, and I think that's a valuable piece of added information. I hope it sways your decision. Thank you. Great, thanks very much. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, Pine Hill. Uh, <coughs> Pine Hill Capital Committee. Thank you. Uh, Frank Hess, South Main Street. Uh, the Sherman School Committee and the Pine Hill School Building Committee have a request for capital funds to support the physical infrastructure at Pine Hill School. We set about to form this request after our meeting with the Capital Budget Committee during this process last year. Last year, we had developed our own five-year projection of needs and a one-year request for things that were basically already broken. The Sherman Capital Budget Committee suggested that we map our capital needs for at least 10 years and that the next year we come back with a more comprehensive plan and request that will cover a five-year period in a more measured, planned manner. We proceeded to follow their advice and the school committee commissioned a professionally done plan that covers a 20-year period. Most town officials have received an electronic copy of the report. It is on the DS School website. It is included in the school committee, Sherman School Committee packet for November 13, 2012. It is located about halfway through the file. Some of us were surprised that the plan did not come back with an end-of-life projection or suggestion for the school. We got a chance to see the tape of the meeting where the company representative gave his report. You could see that he was asked specifically <coughs> if he had an end of useful life projection for the school. And his response was, and I quote, the school has been well maintained and could be used for another 20, 30, or perhaps 40 years if it is well maintained, end quote. He went on to say that if size needs changed or if the format needed for the classrooms changed, then you might look at replacement at some time, at some point in time. Parts of the school are about 55 years old, and there have been two additions and some renovations. As with any building, it takes continual renewal to keep nature from returning it to its natural state you know, of a pile of dust. The 20-year plan 
can be, can be viewed as a plan for a rolling renovation. There's a more measured, need-based plan over time rather than uh, let's do everything now whether we need it or not way of doing business. <clears throat> the capital needs are listed are related to student safety, student health, energy efficiency, and suitability for learning. We are the type of learning outcomes that most communities would love to have. We have to be proactive to continue to provide the type of learning atmosphere that will allow our children to continue to thrive. Without attention, it would be easy for a 55-year-old building to slip into shabbiness, to be in a situation where there is interruption of educational services, to have situations where the protection of student health and safety is not all it could be. When a new family considers coming to Sherburn, the school is one of the places they visit to evaluate their choices. It is necessary that the school reflect the values and pride of the town. If we look at the 20-year projected costs, we might wonder how they would compare if the school was new. For the first five to 10 years, hopefully capital costs would be less, but then we'd be back in the business of renewal again. The same study was done in Dover, and if we compare our 20-year projected cost to Dover's, we find they are about the same. And the Chickering School is about 12 years old. If we look at the long-term projected cost for Pine Hill School, and think about this cost giving us a 20-year useful life without having to pay our share of a 25 to $30 million new school, then it starts to look like a pretty good deal. We put together a five-year request based on the 20-year report. We removed some items that we thought could be completed in a later time frame but could possibly be funded by alternative sources. <laughs> the five-year request is $1,197,300. At earlier meetings, we received input from the advisory committee and the board of selectmen that we used the format of yearly requests rather than a bond that we managed over five years. We took their input and formulated a one-year request. The one-year request is for $310,144. We are open to either approach. I ask for your support to provide the regular capital investment needed to protect, to protect this asset of the town. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Any uh, questions? Elliot? Well, could you tell me within two minutes just what uh, improvements you're contemplating on this article? Well, in two minutes, I could, uh, I could give you the one-year request. Uh, the five-year request would take a little longer. Um, basically, the one-year request, one big thing is uh, fixing the entryway to the school. That was pointed out as a danger area by the person who did the survey. There's many uneven areas. It has sunk five and six inches over time in different places, and it's very uneven. That whole area has to be replaced. Um, then we have some floor replacement in the auditorium and the kitchen, and the kitchen will also involve some asbestos abatement. And then we have some window replacement. We did half of this window replacement a few years ago. This is the other half right across the hallway from those same rooms. And then there were some building security upgrades. That would be the year one. And then um, the year five would include, you know, other flooring and so forth. It'd be a long list, which I, I have a, the whole plan, and you can look at the plan yourself and see what's in the five-year plan. Some things that were pulled out of the five-year plan were some things that the treasurer and the bond council deemed were not bondable by our rules of $10,000 for capital items and, and being repaired. So some of those things were pulled out. And we also, what was in there in the beginning was the road, which we pulled out because we're looking for alternative funding, et cetera. Mark? Yes, Mark. I was the one who uh, first brought up the notion of dividing this request into pieces. And I want to explain the thinking behind dividing this thing up. <coughs> we're still in a, in a recession. Taxes are high in this community. The request for 1.3 million needs to be looked at not just in isolation, but in the fact that we have a number of other projects 
listed under Article 8. We also have the regional schools capital projects. We also have the middle school project. We don't want, we as a Board of Selectmen don't want to go to the voters with big debt exclusion articles at this time if we can avoid it. The initial request for 1.3 million wasn't going to be spent in year one. It was going to be spent over a period of time. We agree that Pine Hill School needs to be maintained. We agree that we need to invest in maintenance. But we didn't think asking the voters now to invest all this money all at the same time on top of everything else made, made good sense for our taxpayers. So we had asked them to come back with a one-year request. And so it's the one-year request that I think we would ask you to, to, to look at. Again, from the point of view of, of you're all asking us to put an override question on the ballot for a debt exclusion, we'd rather go with the smallest possible numbers rather than the higher number. Thank you. So the Board of Selectmen supports the one year um, spending for the maintenance? Yeah. Yeah, I think we voted on it, yes. back to that taking care of the assets you have and we have ten million dollars yeah. land, twenty million dollars in buildings and equipment here's a key building that's uh, served us well for so long and one of the most compelling things Frank showed us in one of his presentations was a comparison of the projections of cost and repairs and maintenance and so forth for Pine Hill versus the nearly what I would call nearly new Chickering school and to maintain Pine Hill, the, the cost to maintain Chickering was, I think, even slightly larger than the cost to maintain right. good old Pine Hill. So, to me, we're not building a new building, we're maintaining a building and we can keep it going in pretty good stead. I think that's a good thing. George? What was the number, Mark, on the, if we break it down to the one year? 310,144. Okay. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Our, our perspective is consistent with this. And we think there are some advantages to going for five years, but we certainly understand the rationale for going for one. Okay. Traffic safety. Engineering and reconstruction of <coughs> Woodland Mill and West and Woodland West Goulding intersections. I'm gonna ask the chief to come up with me because well, he's got a gun on him. <laughs> uh, good call. I think your sheet still shows 110,000. Yeah. Yes, We're not does. asking for 110,000. Uh, it hasn't been engineered, so we don't really know the cost of the construction. We think it's far less than that anyway. <laughs> what we are asking for is 21,000 to go towards engineering, study, surveying, everything that's entailed to redesign, possibly redesign the Woodland and Mill Street intersection and Woodland and Goulding. Uh, we have several bids. We also, uh, both the chief and the CMD director, looked into trying to utilize resources from other towns for engineering, but there was some hurdles there we couldn't get past. Uh, so we reached out to some local engineering firms, uh, one of which we'll see their presentation later for engineering they're doing in town. So the estimate for that was 21000 We also are confident that there may be some residual money out of the Odessa Fund that's, that hopefully will be appropriated after that construction. Um, so we're confident that that can probably go towards some of this or towards the construction. So, so you think there'll be money left over from the Western Avenue project that could be applied to this? Well, I don't want to step on that project, but the, that's money that comes in every year. There's close to 20,000, as you know, that comes in every year. So by the, by the time this is designed, there may be extra money now. There should be by after, right after that project is done. By its estimates, there is residual money 
from the Odessa fund that, that should be freed up. We shouldn't use it till the project's done, obviously, but it could go towards this. And certainly by the time this is designed, you get another 20 plus in that fund towards construction. Mark? Um, I have a question for Sean. Um, on the Odessa fund, isn't that restricted money to roads that are have, have been impacted There's by Odessa? Two to that. One, no one would disagree that Woodland Street is impacted by Odessa. That's the main thoroughfare for trucks to make it from Medfield. Oh, oh it is. The Western they do use it. I didn't. Okay. okay. Definitely, okay. Just, there's not too many roads that aren't impacted by Odessa. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. McGregor yeah. may not be impacted. Really? <laughs> Most other roads in town are. Yeah. Um, no, are we talking about car carriers? Yeah. <laughs> you don't think so? If you're in I downtown live, Medfield, you're trying to get to Western Ave. Where are you I live go? around the corner. I don't think I've ever seen a car see carrier. Well, you'll see the smaller ones. The big ones don't want to go down that road. Anyway, Mark, yeah. I, let, me, let me, Paul. Yeah, sure, sure. I wanted to make a couple of points. First, the Board of Selectmen have agreed to <coughs> reduce the ask on this to 21,000. So we do withdraw the 110. The, the second is that this is, again, we see this as a public safety issue. One of these intersections is a place where a fatality did occur. There is a need to provide for safe, vehicle use of roads in the town. This engineering study will lay out alternatives for us, so it doesn't necessarily mean that their conclusion will be that there will be a big reconstruct. It may, they may end up with some other recommendation, but until we have the engineering done, we don't know that. So we recommend and support <coughs> the appropriation of 21,000 for this purpose. Thank you. <clears throat> Eric, did yeah. you? I just had a question for the chief. I drive these intersections every day, so I get why they're not terrific. Mm -hmm. But as you think about all the intersections in the town, where would you put these in the pecking order of things that bother you when you see them and you think they're a safety issue? <clears throat> are the, would you say these two are the most problematic intersections in town? Are there others? There absolutely are other uh, intersections in town that are more problematic, and we've got data that would show you know, that we have more accidents at certain intersections. However, um, we also have a responsibility, Eric, uh, when we have residents that come in from Woodland Street and share that they can't safely walk, jog, ride their bike, ride their horse up and down Woodland Street because of the amount of traffic that's going by too fast, the car carriers that are you know, impacting the roadway, uh, we have a responsibility to address those needs, and I think that um, this particular project is, is most likely going to be a very short money project, and, and I feel strongly will reduce uh, many of the concerns that the residents have on Woodland Street. Back to the, can we go back to the Odessa, because I only got one point in. The monies that are coming, I think, post-2009 are not restricted as they were prior to that. For the special permit, the wording was changed in that. Bob's waiting. I'm Bob Delaney on Pleasant Street. Uh, I had two points to make. At, at the advisory, a recent advisory meeting, I asked the traffic safety chair uh, whether or not they had considered just one or two additional stop signs there, and he said yes, but he didn't tell me what. The implications were. Uh, it just seems to me, and I drive this road every day, uh, that if you had another, at least one stop sign there, uh, additional stop sign, that would resolve the whole thing from uh, perhaps a naive point of view, but uh, certainly it's cheap. Uh, one other thing that I'd like to suggest, which isn't really, it, it applies to all these, I would hope that as a matter of uh, future policy and present policy, that we would consider, advisory would, uh, would consider taking most, if not a good a majority of these uh, from free cash uh, so that it's not such a temptation to use it uh, to, uh, for operating budgets. And I just did a quick uh, addition there. It's about uh, X, the, uh, the school project. <coughs> It's uh, $415,000, uh, or maybe that does include that. Right? Uh, but it would still leave us with 
uh, an adequate amount of free cash, uh, but not as much to make it a temptation for the operating budget. Mr. Chairman? Bob? Can I answer that one of the questions? Um, I think I just want to answer the question about stop signs. That's, stop signs are an excellent idea, but that's why we want to hire an engineer to see if that is the solution and what the, the engineer would recommend. So the, the point is we all have ideas about how intersections can be improved, but why don't we have the expert tell us what would really work and what might save a life? Yes, Elliot, sorry. I think three-way stops at both of these intersections would solve your problem. Uh, you mentioned West Golding Street. There is no such street in Sherbin as West Golding Street. About 10 years ago, somewhere back there on the pile, against my objections and pleas at town meeting, the uh, town in their stupidity renamed Golding Street, Golding Street East and Golding Street West. I said, this is ridiculous. And for years it, to come, it's Elliot, be I think confusion. We're, we're getting off topic here. I recommend that we call this in your literature, Golding Street West as per order of town meeting back somewhere. Thank you. So noted. Paul? Good morning. Hello, Mr. Chairman, committee, board of selectmen, my fellow citizens. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. I'm Paul Desier. I live at 92 Woodland Street. Over the past year, my fellow residents on Woodland Street and I have gone to the Town Traffic Safety Committee to talk about the imminent threat to the public safety of uh, the citizenry on Woodland Street due to the untenable traffic conditions. Now, the untenable traffic conditions relate to speeders and cars, 18-wheeler trucks, garbage trucks, uh, car transport vehicles, and 18-wheelers that you see on highways. Woodland <clears throat> Street is not designed for those types of uh, vehicles. We have asked that the Town Traffic Safety Committee consider a number of mitigation matters, including making the street one way, in a particular direction, restricting cross traffic, putting in speed bumps, and also redesigning the intersections at Woodland and Mill and Woodland and Goulding Street West. And that is why there is a proposal today to expend $21,000 in town <coughs> funds to look at the design of those intersections. We do view that this as a comprehensive plan and this is the first step in this comprehensive plan. And we would ask that the committee make a favorable recommendation on this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question, Mark? Um, I, I think it was a great idea that you, uh, um, you know, eliminated the construction from the request so we can get the plans and see what we're getting into before devoting money to it. Can you give us a little better idea of what the $21,000 study entails? Is there going to be plans? Is it going to be... I won't say just, but it's going to be just recommendations as to different ways to go, or just uh, what's the study going to include? It's my understanding, um, Russ, that uh, the study is going to include engineering and plans, post-engineering study. And any design of this sort now starts with a survey. So there's a pretty entailed survey um, of both intersections, which is quite a bit of property prior to, to any construction. So the you know, the plans are accurate and no boundaries are uh, too close. Will it include some of the options that we've talked about? What's Will that? it include all the options, either, you know, the extreme option of totally re redesigning and construction and other ones in between? Um, like speed bumps <clears throat> or things like that? That's a good question. I was hoping that Ed Wagner would still be around, but he, he took off. Ed actually is the one that met with the engineer at length, um, and he would have most of the answers to those questions. I guess I'm, I'm troubled by, you know, where this fits in, in the priority of, of things. You were kind enough to share some data with us, and, um, you know, in terms of, of incidents per street, and granted, you know, 
it's a little bit of apples and oranges here, but you know, Woodland is number nine. Um, it has you know, a quarter of the incidence of uh, you know, Washington Street, for instance. Um, and then the intersections don't even crack the top seven in terms of, of accidents. So it just seems to me that if, you know, uh, it's probably a good investment in terms of safety, but is this really the right place to be applying it? Well, there's, there's two sides to that. One, statistics are kind of hard to use when you're using single-digit numbers. Uh, obviously, one thing can sway it. Certainly, when you throw a fatality in there, that's one versus almost none anywhere else in the, in the town. So we have one at one of those intersections. And by redesigning one or both of those intersections, we're hoping to mitigate some of the speed issues that are down the road. We had a pretty severe accident across the street from Mr. Dacier's driveway a few months ago that was, some would say, it was near fatal. Um, that was certainly due to speed, and that would have certainly been mitigated had the, had the intersection curtailed some of that speed as they went through the <coughs> Woodland and Mill intersection. Um, in most of the intersections that have more data, more, more accidents, you mentioned Washington and, and, and Western, we've already made attempts to fix those. Certainly there's more accidents across the street, but those are at least one order of magnitude more expensive than construction. Uh, we've always looked at Elliott and Lake, but the engineering would, would add a zero on that. I would think. And there's land taking and, and huge issues, logistical issues with working on that. We're hoping that the construction won't be much more than the engineering. But we have to do our due, due diligence on the engineering rather than just going out and painting a line on the pavement and thinking that that's going to work. Right. But aren't we missing a sort of a preliminary stage rather than going for the 21,000? I mean, if the conclusion is let's put in a couple stop signs. Aren't we just looking really for a survey at this point? <coughs> We're not looking for a actual plans on the solution because the survey may say hey you know stop signs will do the trick I mean what 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 where is the it seems to be there's a discretionary amount in the 21,000 that could be eliminated and get just the survey <coughs> no. <less> than 21. <coughs> the, the survey is a land survey it's just land engineers going out and surveying just staking out the entire all the property boundaries and lines and geometry of the road the services are, is a professional engineer who's going to make the determination. Um, so he's probably not going to do a $21,000 job and come back and say, put three stop signs in. Uh, but we've looked at that and we're not quite sure we can legally do that as well. Uh, but to do our due diligence, he has to come up with a design. Otherwise, it would be nothing short of us going out there, any one of us, and painting lines on the road and saying, cut the pavement there and throw a curb in. And those days are somewhat over. There's liabilities to that. I'm confused by what you just said. You think that by paying him $21,000, he's going to not want to come back with a three stop sign solution if that would be the solution? I think by paying a professional engineer, he's going to do his due diligence and study it. And he is a professional at that. We aren't. We're laymen. We can think we know what's going to fix it. He's right, going to apply some engineering principles towards that. Right. I, I thought you just said that you thought he wasn't going to come back with something like three stop signs. And that's... I no, I don't think to... he will. My opinion is he won't come back with just three stop signs. Okay, but not because of the 21,000. Simply because it's no. not the right solution. Right. Okay. But we're uh, hoping that 21,000 is going to bring the appropriate solution based on his Whatever expertise. that is. Whatever that is. Okay. Real quick, I mean, I would say, you know, if he comes back with two stop signs or three stop signs, the best solution, that's what the professional engineer's recommendations will be. But um, anecdotally, I live on Mill Street, and I don't know where they fall in the pecking order, but something has to be done with those intersections. I travel them every day, and especially coming off of, uh, you know, Woodling and uh, Woodland and uh, uh, West Gouldings, uh, Gouldings, Gouldings West, sorry. West. Um, uh, Terrible intersections, both of them, and I think it's uh, smart to uh, try to get ahead and take care of them. I lived on that road anecdotally as well on Woodland Street, and I've had several near misses of uh, Woodland people going right through the stop signs um, onto Mill and Gould. I mean, very near misses, and the, the, the uh, amount of trucks and the traffic going on that road, the speed. I couldn't come out of my driveway several times because they just travel 50 miles an hour on that road. They don't. 
pay attention. So it's it's really a dangerous road. You can't walk on it. You can't do anything on it. Sounds like a revenue well, opportunity for the police. Uh, we don't do traffic enforcement. <laughs> 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 do you want to contribute? Sure, Mr. Chairman. The other thing I'd mention is that we have, or the committee has before it, Article 20, which relates to Western Avenue and intersections. It's the same or similar subject matter to what's being proposed here. And so, again, I would ask that the committee consider both equally and make a favorable recommendation for both. If a de negative determination is made to one, I think it applies to both also. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Okay, um, as I said, we're going to um, we're going to get through Article Nine and Ten before we uh, before we go back and vote, so we get a complete picture on capital. So I think we're ready to move on to um, on to Article Nine. You just knocked it down. It's going to be left. Which is to see if the town will vote to approve borrowing authorized by the Dover Sherburne Regional School District Committee for the purpose of paying costs of adding air conditioning to the middle school. Including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and to determine whether the town's approval of the borrowing shall be conditioned upon the passage of a vote by the town to exempt its share of the principal and interest of such borrowing from the limitations on total taxes imposed by Proposition, proposition Two and a Half, so called, or alternatively to vote appropriate to vote to appropriate by transfer from free cash in the Treasury a sum of money for said purposes pursuant to an intergovernmental agreement with the dover Sherburn Regional School District and the Town of Dover to provide funding for such project or take any other action relative thereto. Thank you. Uh, Richard Robinson, Regional School Committee. Uh, I'll, I'll make this very brief. I think you've all seen the, the full presentation and people who haven't, uh, it's available at the uh, website of the Regional School Committee. Uh, what we're proposing is to install uh, air conditioning at the middle school. Um, just a brief reca recap, the school was built in 2003. Uh, there, uh, in the original design, was a plan for air conditioning. It was pulled out before the, the building was built over cost concerns. Um, the, um, since then, there have been uh, ongoing complaints about um, overheating uh, during the warm months of May and June and September and, and even into October. Um, a couple <coughs> years back, we, we started to look at the problem uh, quite closely. Uh, the, each classroom has a, a temperature monitor in it, so we took, uh, uh, took temperature data from um, all of the classrooms in the middle school and, and just mapped them out. Uh, this is a, uh, a, whoops, sorry, a week in June. Oh, dear. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is a week in June of 2010. Uh, the colors don't come through, but the lighter uh, color there is the, in the 80 to 85 range. Those are individual classrooms arrayed from left to right. Those are days of the week uh, in clusters from top to bottom. Uh, and uh, the darker colors, uh, 80, uh, 85 to 90, and there may be a bit of black on there that's not coming through, which is 90 and above. Uh, and that's just during the school day, map from 7 to 4. Um, and uh, again, the, the full presentation is available if you want to look at it. This is just by way of example that uh, there is a very significant heat buildup in many of our classrooms uh, during the warm months. Uh, in uh, 2010, and, and the, the trend was the same in 2011, numbers are a little bit different, 15 to 20 percent of the school days had temperatures in those classrooms during school hours of 78 or above. Uh, and many of those classrooms substantially above the building is simply unable in uh, periods of uh, significant uh, heat outside to cool off uh, sufficiently at night. Um, this leads to a poor working conditions for our teachers uh, and administrators um, and poor learning conditions for our uh, students. Um, to put it bluntly, I think we are throwing money away to spend a lot of money on our schools if we can't be supplying a, a good learning environment uh, while for, for 15 to 20 percent of the year. came up as a contract negotiation issue. Not, we were not compelled by that negotiation to solve this problem, but we did agree to uh, pursue 
uh, solutions, and that's where we are now. We've looked at other ways of trying to solve the problem. Room fans don't offer uh, anything like the level of uh, comfort uh, increase that we would need to solve the problem. Painting the roof white might take the internal temperatures down a couple of degrees. That certainly would be a help. On the other hand, we'd probably <coughs> pay more during the winter in extra heating costs because we would be losing some of the, uh, some of the increase uh, uh, heat from the, from the sun during the winter. What we're looking for is a uh, $853,000 uh, uh, expenditure in order to uh, air condition each of the classrooms in the middle school. We'd be looking at probably about $10,000 of ongoing operating costs in order to, uh, to use the AC. Uh, this, uh, um, the 853000 is from a, a bid, excuse me again, uh, uh, from a bid that um, uh, we'll, we put out for uh, request for proposals, and the 10000 operating is an approximation from the design engineer. That's the project, uh, and I want to make sure that we don't leave the project without talking about the wording, thank you, without talking about the wording of the uh, amendment, which is different uh, than the wording that we submitted. But I'd be happy to take uh, any questions on the project, and then maybe we can talk a little bit about the wording. What's the projected annual cost on the bond? Yeah, that's a good question. Anybody over there remember what that is? <coughs> Shelley Paulson, Chair of the Regional School Committee. Uh, we have the debt combined with the second article that we're following after this one um, and some debt that we carry. So for Sherburne for the first year, it'd be 89,120. This 853,000 is split with Dover and with a five-year bond. Uh, so Sherburne's share would be 89,120, but that also includes the next article and some debt we're currently carrying. So, Shelley. Yeah. First of all, welcome. Thanks for sitting through all of the insurance stuff. Um, so, what's Sherwin's share then of the 853? I don't have that figure. Do you have it, Valerie? About 45. Yeah, it's 45, under 50 percent. Okay. And then presumably you don't have the split on the debt service either. I don't. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Well, I. Sorry, I have to put my lawyer's hat on, but under the general laws, chapter 7116D, the town of Sherburne has 60 days to either accept the borrowing that the school has already voted or to reject it. And using the calendar, computing that statutory time period out, the town has until May 4th to either accept or reject if we are going to consider an override question, that would come too late. We either have to act on May 4th to accept or reject, or by statute, it's deemed accepted. And therefore, I would request on behalf of the Board of Selectmen that the regional schools withdraw the borrowing and reissue the borrowing, giving us additional two-week period of time <coughs> And I think the same time period would uh, also uh, adversely affect the town of Dover. So both communities would be adversely affected by the, the uh, timing on the, the region's vote. Thank you, Mr. Dorensis. We are aware of that. And as a courtesy to both Sherborne and to Dover, uh, the region will be addressing that at their next uh, meeting, which is within the first week of April, which then gives the significant time for the 60 days for both towns. Um, thank you. On behalf of the town of Sherman, we thank you. Yeah, thank you for bringing that to our attention. It was an oversight, but it has been brought to our attention, and the motion has been uh, provided to us by Bond Council, and it will be brought to the next school committee meeting. Thank you. The middle school air conditioning specifically for the first year, um, solely for the individual first year, is $74,770 for the town of Sherburne and $90,430 for Dover. Thank you. No. 
other questions or comments? Uh, the, so the question on the, the wording of the motion, um, the, um, uh, the wording that we, well, let me back up just a little bit. Um, we had uh, uh, hoped to and, and tried to lay the groundwork for uh, to uh, have the two towns and the region sign an intermunicipal agreement uh, which, our bond, <coughs> which our bond council informed us would allow uh, each town to choose the method of payment, either from free cash or by uh, or by bonding, uh, you know, borrowing money in order to, to pay for it. Um, those negotiations were uh, difficult and frustrating, and uh, we got to the point at which uh, we did not see a light at the end of that tunnel. And so the motions that we uh, gave to each town for the warrants uh, were for the region bonding and the towns paying as they, uh, as they would. Uh, Dover had its, had its um, warrant committee uh, meeting the other evening and approved the um, that that bonding uh, language. The motion that uh, that you read <coughs> out is is uh, worded in a way that uh, I think gives us a little pause, and we would like to be reassured that this motion is consistent with Dover's motion. Therefore, should both pass, uh, and presumably should Sherburn uh, need to uh, go ahead to. A vote and I mean to a, an election and, and vote it, we would be in a position to pay for the project rather than finding ourselves suddenly without a, a way to pay for it simply because the two motions in the two towns were different. I hope that was clear. So what's the cure here? Well, the cure was, I thought, the, the motions that we that we put forward. It's encouraging to see in this motion the mention of an intermunicipal agreement, which we had thought was uh, you know, dead in the water. Um, but I'm, a, I'm only afraid, and I would love to be reassured by somebody who knows what they're talking about, I'm only afraid that this motion combined with Dover's motion, uh, simply they don't, they don't click together. And I don't know what the solution is, but I, I would hate to go to town meeting with all the best intentions of the world and find that we are, are dead. I, I can answer that. Great. The, uh, the article <coughs> allowed for a variety of options, but the motion that you make is not what's printed in the warrant. They have their own motion that town council will prepare. <laughs> what we tried to do was to set it up so that you could choose to use free cash or borrowing but you can't use free cash unless town meeting votes that and we sign an intermunicipal agreement. We didn't want to sign an intermunicipal agreement before town meeting because the intermunicipal agreement required us, committed us to make the payment no matter what, no matter what town meeting voted. We are prepared to sign an agreement if that's if at the end of the day you want to use free cash. But in the meantime, the region has borrowed the money and has gone down the traditional path. So therefore, we are in the position where, with Dover having voted to borrow the money, and with the region voting to borrow the money, that appears to be the, the remaining alternative. To make a long story short, if you, want, if you decide to use free cash, I think I can, make it e I can make it even shorter because I don't think there's any appetite to use free cash to, to fund this. So we're going to have to come up with, if it passes, we need to come up with a motion that is consistent with what Dover's done so the two work together. I think. So that's that. the answer that we will not be inconsistent with Dover. Can we? Corey, go first. Yeah, uh, Corey Lincoln, uh, 10 Great Rock Road, also the town moderator. I just wanted to tell Richard that to reiterate what Paul said correctly is that what you are reading here is simply an article on the warrant. It is not the text of the motion that will be made at town meeting. And as long as the motion is within the framework of the article, you're okay. The fine tuning on the pr precise methodology of funding will be addressed in the article. I, I mean, I beg your pardon, I just made the same mistake. In the motion, not in the article, okay? 
that's very reassuring. Uh, and, <laughs> and, I and I hope that that really is the end of the conversation. I, and I, I'm very happy at that at right now, but I, I would want to make sure that, that uh, when those motions are, are made, that they are that they correspond between the two towns. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Well, the, the motions are drafted with the assistance of town council, so. And I hope they would be drafted with, with looking at what Dover's motion is as well, simply that we don't end up in a place we don't want to be. Valerie. And the motions were originally, and, and thank you, Corey, for the point of clarification, because that wasn't our understanding um, at the central office. But the, the wording has been drawn up by bond council um, and it was sent to the towns to be able to look at. And I appreciate what uh, Mr. Drensis is saying was the change in the article. Um, but it's really helpful if we have notification ahead of time so that we might be able to go ahead and clarify points like this. We will be happy to resubmit the original um, suggestion and that perhaps then if there's, it's the same it's the same principles that we used for the wastewater treatment of which it seemed as though everybody was in agreement on and we'd be happy to submit what was again submitted earlier and what Dover has approved. Okay, should we move on to uh, Article 10? See if the town will vote to approve the borrowing authorized by the Dover Sherwin Regional School District Committee for the purpose of paying the costs of various items of capital equipment and or improvements, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and to determine whether the town's approval of the borrowing shall be conditioned upon the passage of a vote by the town to exempt its share of the principal and interests of such borrowing from the limitations on total taxes imposed by Proposition 2 and a half, so called, or alternatively to vote to appropriate by transfer from free cash in the Treasury a sum of money for said purposes pursuant to an inter intergovernmental agreement with the Dover Sherman Regional School District and the Town of Dover to provide funding for such capital equipment and or improvements or take any other action relative thereto. <clears throat> Thank you. I don't know what just happened to my slide. I'm sure you all read it before I put it up there, so it's not a problem. Uh, the, um, thanks. Uh, uh, I think uh, Frank Hess uh, gave a, a pretty clear uh, explanation of the capital planning process that took place uh, in both the two towns and at the region. Um, our uh, report is uh, also available on, on the website, and we are looking for uh, funding for the uh, they really must do first year uh, parts of that parts of that report. Um, it, it is certainly looking at a, a twenty year capital uh, plan, uh, daunting to to think about what it takes to maintain uh, a, a regional campus. Um, it is, however, important to remember it's a, it is uh, roughly speaking a forty million dollar facility, uh, and uh, and we've had uh, ten years of very little. Uh, uh, required uh, maintenance, capital maintenance for um, uh, for the for the facility. We're now reaching the point at which it is uh, uh, only prudent to begin to uh, look seriously at what our needs are uh, as we as we look out, and also to begin to actually fund those those capital needs. So this is the first of uh, what uh, we hope will be an annual request for capital <coughs> to um, to maintain um, to maintain the campus. As I say, I do apologize. This doesn't, I don't think we're going to get information from there, but it's a fairly, uh, it's a fairly small laundry list of projects that um, uh, with the uh, input of our, um, our building supervisor, Ralph Kelly, with the input of the, uh, the capital uh, project uh, group, and with the input of the school committee and the, and the administration, we feel is a, a very important uh, start to this process. The total is $122,000. The uh, various items in it, I can, I can read the numbers if you like, uh, if that would be helpful. If not, I'll simply uh, list what they are. What's your pleasure? Uh, I think a, a, a general description will be fine, and people can ask questions if okay. they need more detail. Right. Um, and uh, uh, you know, these are, these are uh, uh, some fairly standard items, some flooring, some, uh, some lighting, uh, replacing a snowblower. Um, replacing some uh, some service doors with more energy efficient doors. Those will, in fact, we hope, end up paying for themselves. Uh, so, 
Michael, do you want to add anything? Because Michael has really been the I'll just answer chief engineer. Yeah. Uh, I, I did have a question on the snowblower. Yeah. Six thousand dollars. Yeah. This is to. Um, it's a lower cost. It's several of them, and it's a lower cost than what was originally recommended. And the intent is. So, so it's, it's multiple units. Then. Yeah. That's, okay. That's my recollection, and the intent is that the custodial staff can do more snow removal, and we depend less on on outsourced providers. Pat, I had a question. I was looking at the uh, school committee presentation from January 8th. And in that presentation, which is the more recent one, this number appears as if you're not bonding it, as if you're not borrowing for it. It looks like it was run through the operating budget. The more recent presentation, it looks like you're bonding it. So I wondered what happened. You, you compare the two, that you offset this item by saying it, it appeared to be dispersed for maintenance and replacement, which made it sound like you're pulling it out of operating. And I wonder if you made a decision between the 8th of January and today to have it in operating before and then bonding it, because as you know from our discussion last year, you, you, you said it was kind of your policy for certain kind of things that you really needed to get done that you might run it through operating. What changed? Mm -hmm. Do you want to take that? There's, there was a $35,000 placeholder in the operating. We still want to maintain that 35000 in our operating budget for major maintenance and, and things because I, I do know that there's a security item pending as well that's that's not included in this. And and so because of the timing of all of this, the, the hundred and twenty two thousand um, just naturally fell to the the, the debt side of, of things. And then we're going forward reviewing other options for the subsequent years. Do you know how much you had last year under what we would normally call capital? Well, I don't know what you'd normally call capital because we start to get into this gray zone of what's major maintenance and what's what's capital. I believe it's thirty-five thousand, though. I yeah. have to Last refer year. to I was not on the school committee yeah. that year. So, so the number hasn't particularly changed from year to year because that has implications for a one percent, right? Because if you shifted capital out, you'd increase the operating. Budget. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get that. No, it's just that if, if, if we, we just want to be sure we're using apples to apples. If capital moved out on, out of the operating budget, then it would, it would, in, no, i got to stop talking, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine with me. Do the alarm applies to you too? Absolutely. No man's above the alarm. Uh, <laughs> now, Eric, did you have something you would No, no, I'm fine. Okay. I think I get it. He's okay. I was just going to respond to the, you know, we've been very stable and very fortunate with the work that's been done at the middle school and the region, but again, it ties back into looking at the uh, study that was done uh, regarding the maintenance and that there were expenses that we needed to pay attention to before we had really large um, unexpected uh, attention. So it did reside in the operating. You're absolutely right, um, Eric. And then we also um, did a slight delay to determine whether the items that had been identified were all bondable, uh, of which they are. Peter? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just a point of order. This is a public hearing. You're discussing a list of items which apparently you have access to and we don't. I briefly saw a list put on the screen. I don't know if that's the same list it came down, but there was clearly one item on there that's just pure maintenance, and it said it was maintenance of uh, irrigation spray heads. Uh, but I didn't get to read the whole list. My point being, the it was offered to enumerate what the items were and the cost, and I would appreciate as a public hearing that we hear that. Thank you. Richard? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, so the list, uh, which uh, again totals 122,000, has 47,000 for, for replacing failing uh, floor tiles at the middle school, 22,000 for repointing masonry at Linguist Commons, 16,000 for lighting and walkways for high school parking, 14,000 for updating flooring in the high school, 7,500 for irrigation valve maintenance allowance, 6,000 for replacing snowblower equipment, 5,500 for exhaust fan maintenance and replacement in the kitchen, and 4,500 to replace overhead high school service doors with more energy efficient doors. Can I ask a question? Has Bond Council said th those are all bondable? That, that is my <coughs> best for you. Yes. Thank you. Mm. 
Any other questions and comments? Okay. I am going to um, now move to uh, to vote these items. And um, I will uh, I will make the motion. Exactly how to do this, but I, I intend to move favorable action on all of them, um, except I'm, uh, you know, since I'm the one making the motion, I'm going to, uh, on traffic safety, I'm going to move for no action, so you may want to watch out for that. That one's important to you. So um, let, me, uh, let me read Article 8 one more time to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds or borrow pursuant to any applicable statute a sum of money and if so what sum for the purpose of capital expenditures for the offices, departments, boards and commissions of the town of Sherburne and to determine if any amount borrowed under this article shall be contingent upon the passage of a ballot question exempting the amounts required to pay for the bonds from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half or take any action related thereto. So I'll take a motion to approve favorable action on the purchase of a command vehicle for the fire department in the amount of forty thousand dollars. So moved. Second. All in favor? Sorry. I think it's unanimous. I'll take a motion to approve the expenditure or, uh, to approve fifty five hundred dollars for a computer server for the fire department. Second. All in favor? Uh, unanimous. Uh, I will take a motion to approve $153,700 for uh, the replacement of HVAC, uh, HVAC system at Station 1 for the fire department. Move. Second. Any discussion? Is that, we have this TBD here, is that it's now we know how much it's going to cost? Is that correct? Yes. One, five, three. Okay. So. Yes. All, all in favor? Unanimous? Take a motion to approve $9,032 for a solar pedestrian activated crossing light. There's a different number on that. Okay. Seventy-five. Ten thousand seventy-five. Ten thousand seventy-five. Yeah. For the three, because we're getting a three thousand grant, which will go into, which will go into. We can we can accept a grant and apply it to this purpose. For that. No, no, I understand, but they're, if they approve the net number, it depends upon the grant. Wait, shouldn't they be approving the gross number? I would say no. Okay. Let me start again. I'll take the, the, the grant's already been awarded. I'll take a motion to approve $10,075 for a solar pedestrian, pedestrian activated crossing light. Moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. I'll, I'll take a motion to approve $60,000 for a dump truck for CM&D. Moved. Second. All in favor? You're no, Vicki? It's 10 Passes 8 to 1. I'll take a motion to approve $30,000 for a pickup truck for CM&D. Moved. Second. All in favor? Again, passes eight to one. I'll take a motion to approve $80,000 for the asphalt overlay of the transfer station, including fencing and containers. Moved. Second. All in favor? Passes unanimously. I'll take a motion to approve $98,850 for communications equipment. Not the 110. Is that the right, Is that the right number? number? I thought no, 110. 110. No, it's 110. Oh, it needs a contingency. My apologies. 
I'll take a motion to approve $110,000 for communications equipment. Moved. Second. All in favor? Passes unanimously. <clears throat> I'll take a motion to approve $80,000 for the Pine Hill Emergency Access Road. Moved. Second. All in favor? Passes unanimously. Right. I'll take a motion to approve $310,144 for capital needs for the Pine Hill School. Moved. Second. All in favor? And I will take a motion to uh, vote no action on $21,000 for engineering and reconstruction of Woodland Mill intersection and Woodland West Goulding intersection. Can, can, can I ask a question? Or you, am I allowed to ask a question before you should? Let's second it and then we'll discuss it. Okay. Moved. Second. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious as to the sense of, uh, of why that's not a good project from whoever thinks it's not a good project on the committee. Well, I guess it would be me because yeah. I made the motion. And well, I, I just think that that money is probably better spent elsewhere <coughs> in terms of solving traffic safety problems. Fair enough. So, I, so then I would ask a question. Um, what I heard was that this is not the spot in town with the most incidents, but that or or requiring the the most amelioration. Excuse me. But <laughs> when you factor in cost and likelihood of success, that I think the selectmen as well as the uh, the other proponents said this was the most reasonable one to proceed with. Is that, is, that, that was what I heard. That's I correct. Heard, I, I heard that too. It was a bang for the buck point. Exactly. That was our position. Okay, and, and I'm taking that at face value. If, if that's the assessment, um, I think we should vote in favor of it because there may be a, uh, another project, but if the other project costs too much and there's no way we're going to remedy it, I wouldn't cause this project to suffer if it's in fact a needy project, which by all accounts it is a needy project. Okay, so we're, uh, we're voting a no action on this one. All in favor of no action? All against? Okay, fails. One to eight, I'll take an alternate motion. I move that $21,000 be appropriated for engineering and reconstruction of the Woodland Mill and Woodland West Goulding intersections. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Okay. Um, sorry, yes, passes eight to one. Article nine. Um, I'll read it again. Uh, to see if the town will vote to approve borrowing authorized by the Dover Sherburn Regional School District Committee for the purpose of paying costs of adding air conditioning to the middle school, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and to determine whether the town's approval of the borrowing shall be conditioned upon the passage of a vote by the town to exempt its share of the principal and interest of such borrowing from the limitations on total taxes imposed by Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, or alternatively to vote to appropriate by transfer from free cash in the Treasury a sum of money for said purposes pursuant to an intergovernmental agreement with the dover Sherburn Regional School District and the Town of Dover to provide funding for such project or take any other action relative thereto. I will take a motion to approve, or to, rather to recommend favorable action on Article 9. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Sorry, I wanted to discuss. I'm oh, sorry, oh, I apologize. Oh, Slow on the draw. Um, <clears throat> what I see we're on the path to is uh, voting in favor of a total of $1,363,286.15, approximately because some of these are estimates for the middle <laughs> for the region. Um, we haven't talked about that total number, and that seems to be you know, one of the reasons that we discussed these together 
was to have sort of this panoptic view of uh, what's going on here. And, you know, I really wish that we had been able to hear from Capital Budget, who's, you know, trying to take a long-term view, not just of what we do this year, but, you know, the coming years, and to see how this fits in. Um, you know, I regret to bring this up right in the middle, but um, it, I, I wish we had, uh, uh, you know, sort of talked about the whole picture here. Um, is there anything we can do or just plow ahead or can well, we Well, you can, you can request that we defer this vote until um, Tuesday and we can try and get some more information. Well, may I ask the capital budget people for their, you know, a sense of would you have anything to tell us before Tuesday? Can you, uh, what exactly is the question? Well, um, I am... My understanding is that part of the purpose for you to be a committee is to, you know, look at the current requests and uh, projections for requests that will be coming up in future years, what our current debt service is, you know, all those kinds of considerations. And, you know, I, I would have liked it if, if somebody taking that big picture view could ad make some advice to us about uh, you know, how these uh, items that we're uh, talking about today fit into this biggest picture. You know, will, uh, you know, what, what are we talking about in terms of debt service, for example, if we vote this whole amount per year? What does that do to our debt service line next year for, or fiscal 14, which is what we're talking about? Um, yeah, so we've, uh, there's been a lot of moving parts which are starting to come into focus. A lot of that is actually happening today, unfortunately. I think by Tuesday we could have a better picture, but it, it, it's still going to have some moving parts. All right. Then I would suggest a, that we defer the actual voting, um, at least on the remaining items. Um, or, you know, the, uh, I, I don't know that anything's going to change our mind, but if uh, unless they come up with some sort of compelling reason about uh, why we shouldn't take on this much debt, um, but I, I think just as a procedural matter, it would be best if we did have that kind of assurance from people taking that big picture look before okay. we vote these things. That's fine. Then we will, um, we will defer the vote on Article 9 and also saying Article 10. Yes. Um, well, I, if, if I had sort of been on top of things, I would have made this little speech at the very beginning. So until I, my apologies. Until Tuesday, until Tuesday evening. Mark? Before you go on to a new article, I just want to tell you that the Board of Selectmen have arranged for lunch for everyone, and the lunch has arrived. Thank you. Well, this, I think this is a good point to, uh, to take that break. Could I just ask one question about the, the air conditioning? Did we get final resolution about the, the two-town thing where you're satisfied, Richard, with the... Or, or do we know, Valerie, for sure yet? Well, you sent it once before, but we're happy to send it to you again, which only addresses the authorization for the regional school district to borrow. It eliminates any free cash or any reference to the intermunicipal. Okay, and that's what's going to get voted on? That's what we would like to have voted, voted. yes. Okay. But yeah, that's... That is or is not what we're voting on. That's what, that's, I'm just I confused. know, it makes us, a, yeah. As, as, long as, as long as the motion that goes to town floor is legally consistent with the motion I that, <coughs> sorry. Yeah. As long as the motion that goes to town, town meeting floor is legally consistent with the motion that Dover yes. intends to bring, obviously we're happy. My concern was that the motion that you guys are looking at is not the motion that our bond council provided to both towns. It's a different different wording and, and has some substantively different parts of it. Corey so is nice enough to reassure me that everything is, is going to be fine and I'd take her word for it, but I'd still like to verify that. Okay, with so our council. voting positively on this is it doesn't matter for us to vote positively that there may be a change in the language at the motion. Well, is that correct? Well, right, but that, I get, I don't know, I guess I'm not being clear with my question, which is if we vote this 
yeah, article <laughs> positively, then we can. I don't think that causes a problem. It doesn't that's cause your, a problem. I don't think that. I, mean, okay, I must be right yeah, about that. Because because you're not looking at a motion. Right. You're only looking on a recommendation concerning an, uh, an article. A motion that appears at, at town meeting floor may very well be different. Okay. So once you vote a recommendation, then an article will be crafted, or I, a motion will be crafted in concert with town okay. council. Okay. And we can make sure at that point that it's, it, it, you know, it coordinates with Dover. Okay. And then when you come to town meeting, you'll make that motion on the floor. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what was important is the article, the way the selectmen did it, was to have it wide enough so that the motion could fit at the mm -hmm. time. That's, that's yeah. the elegance of the they warrant. Did. All the options were laid out in the article, just so whatever the motion was would be okay. Okay. Thank you. Why don't we take a break for lunch and come back at uh, 10 of 1, please? No?